uh, could I start by, uh, by asking you to contemplate something, just to contemplate something, because I have to reduce my 40-page speech uh, to a very short period of time. Could I ask you just to contemplate something? Can you just try and imagine never being alone? Just try and imagine that. Never being alone. Just think about that for a minute. Just think about that for a minute. Can you imagine never being allowed to make a decision for yourself? Think about that now. You know, I know women are probably more used to it than men, but think about it. <laughs> they are awake. They are awake. But think about it for a second. Imagine thinking never being able to make a decision about your own finances. Imagine never being able to make a decision about where you go, where you sleep, who your companion is. Never sleeping with someone. Imagine that. There's a very famous playwright in Ireland. I know most of you won't have heard from him. His name was John B. Keane, and he lived in Kerry. And he wrote, he wrote The Field, for instance. You've, you've all heard of The Field. Uh, in but he also wrote a play called The Chastitute, which was about a man who never had sex. And the sorrow of it, the absolute sadness attached to that life, spent alone, in isolation and desolation. But imagine having all of that sadness within a crowd. I actually, when I think about it, it actually, it's very difficult to contemplate. And that's really the transformation that needs to happen, not just in Israel, but all over the world. We are a little bit further ahead than you are in Israel. But I think the beauty of what you're doing in Israel is that virtually you have a blank canvas. And you can learn from so many other people. And the delegation that came under the guidance of Gerald Quinn to Ireland, you know, uh, typical Israelis, it was, you know, stoic face, no, 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 we can't do it, we can't do it. Went back home and within 24 hours we're going to do it. You know, it cut, cut everyone offside, we're going to do it. But the capacity legislation that we're putting in place, and it's gone through committee stage and it will be going in uh, to uh, the National Parliament very, very shortly. It, we spent two years consulting on it, two years, not just with service providers, but with people with disabilities themselves. Two years we spent. And as a result of that, we, the, the proposers of the piece of legislation, brought forward 140 amendments. 140 amendments. So it is a completely different bill to what we originally proposed. And basically what it is about is about hearing, listening to and acting on the will and preferences of other people. Just listening. You know, my mother used to have a saying that there's a very good reason why you have two ears and one mouth. <laughs> and we really do need to listen to that. Listen to that. I had a very bad accident. You know, most people say to me, even still they would say to me, how are you still so passionate? There was a reshuffle, by the way, and that's why they asked me, and I was the only one left standing only because no one else wanted a job. But could I say to you that the reason I'm so passionate about it is that I had a very bad accident when I was, uh, when I was a very young child. And I spent seven years of my life on the flat of my back recovering. Still from time to time, have to be in and out, you know, uh, but on my feet and walking around. No matter how many times I said, I don't want to do that, I was still lifted out of the bed, put on the trolley, and taken off for very good reason. I'm not saying there weren't good reasons, but the helplessness of it still stays with me. That helplessness, that not being listened to, that not being consulted about your personal integrity. So I ask you the question again. What do you think it would be like never to be alone? And what do you think it would be like never to make a decision for yourself? I think it must be the most awful hell that anyone could live through. And you know, we're not saying that people with disabilities will want to live a life that will be more adventurous than ours, that they will want things that we never imagined. As a matter of fact, when you talk to people with disabilities, both people with physical, sensory, mental, and intellectual, really what they want is a life just as ordinary as yours and mine. Just as ordinary as yours and mine. But a life of their choosing. 
and a life that they consider to be worth living. Am I in my time? Thank you. Thank you.